Hello there, it is I, Justin, and you're watching Justin's Garage. It's been a while since I posted a mode vlog style video, so I thought to myself, why not entertain my fellow quarantiners? Why not share my embarrassing cry story? So without further ado, let's go. So we all have our own crash story, and sadly I have mine, not too proud of it, but crashing is part of the journey, just as much as riding. So my first and only crash happened a couple years ago, when I bought my first bike, a 2008 Suzuki LS650, also known as the S40, and the Savage, and the Boulevard. Why they couldn't have just picked one name is beyond me, but that's besides the point. This was my first bike, and the first I actually got to ride it. I was excited and unskilled, I made the poor decision to buy a huge ass bike, being a 150 pound, 5 foot 11 guy, with no prior experience. That was my first mistake. My next mistake was riding at night. With my permit like a genius I was. The bike also had new tires, 5 miles on them, so they were slick as could be, and I was riding a brand new pavement. I bet you can guess what happened next. I sure didn't see it coming. I was turning into my apartment complex parking lot that was freshly paved a week or so prior, took a turn a little too fast, brand new tires, brand new pavement, and an unskilled rider combined into the perfect mixture for a nice low side crash. The bike went down, I got ejected, somehow got my foot caught in the rear portion of the bike, so me and the bike took a nice 20 to 30 foot slide down the parking lot. I was only wearing a helmet with jeans and a t-shirt, blocked out temporarily, which I assume due to be hitting my head a few times. When I came out of my daze finally, I realized my leg was stuck underneath the 500 pound bike, gas and oil was pouring out all over me in the ground. When I finally zoned back in, I quickly pulled my leg out from underneath of it and I was able to get the bike lifted up and turned off. Adrenaline is crazy, I wasn't aware I could lift a bike that heavy. At this point, blood was pouring from my road rash covered arm and I had to walk the bike up the parking lot to my garage where my parents who were visiting found me bleeding and dazed. A week or so later, my head stopped hurting and the minor concussion healed. Three months later, the third degree road rash that had eaten most of my skin on my right elbow healed, leaving a gnarled scar and deformed skin. The bruises went away and I luckily avoided any broken bones. Those were the worst three months of my life. I was left with the decision to give up motorcycling completely or to heal and try again. Let's just say my family isn't a family of quitters, so I spent the next few months repairing and replacing broken parts on the bike, getting back to rideable and looking good. I sold it and bought my Ninja clone and started the motorcycle journey all over again. Since then I've had five bikes and I've learned so much about working on them from my experience. I look back and wish it hadn't have happened, but I know if I wouldn't have gone through this experience I wouldn't be the rider I am today and I wouldn't have learned all the stuff that I learned on working on bikes. I'm grateful that I kept riding and I hope my journey inspires others to keep riding and keep going regardless of the struggles they face. I'm fully licensed now and I take safety and riding very seriously. At GAT all the way, no more road rash from me. If you don't wear gear, please do. Road rash hurts so bad, just FYI. Stay safe brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoy the video. Please consider liking and subscribing for more content. Till we meet again, I will see you later.